in stoichiometry, we relate the relative quantities of reactants and products. And, uh, you know, a simple example is uh, for a car. If you manufacture cars, you need four tires, right, and one steering wheel. So the stoichiometric ratio would be one to four, and that's one steering wheel to four tires. So that would be what we would term the stoichiometric ratio. So I have a chemical reaction here between iron and oxygen to produce iron 3 oxide. And notice that it is balanced. So we have the coefficients here. These are correct. And so to produce two moles of iron 3 oxide, I need to react four moles of iron with three moles of oxygen. And that will give me exactly two moles of iron 3 oxide. So I can write um, these um, uh, what we call mole ratios. So for every three moles of oxygen reacted, I would need four moles of iron, okay? Um, for every three moles of oxygen reacted, I produce two moles of iron three oxide. For every four moles of iron reacted, we can produce two moles of iron three oxide. So our stoichiometric coefficient, let's say for, um, here we have three moles of oxygen to two moles of iron three um, oxide would be three to two in this case. Um, in this case, um, we have to react three moles of oxygen with four moles of iron, so this would be a three to four ratio. And it's actually that simple. Notice the way that we write these, uh, we can actually use these mole ratios as conversion factors. And this is really nice because this allows us to relate reactants to reactants, or relate reactant to product or product to reactant. As long as I can write out my mole ratios, I can determine maybe how much of a particular reactant I need to react with a given amount of another reactant. Or if I have a given amount of reactant, I can determine how much product can be formed. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we already know if we react four moles of iron will produce two moles of iron three oxide. Now, what if I react only two moles of iron, then how many moles of iron three oxide are we going to produce? Well, I cut this in half, so two moles of iron will give us one mole of iron three oxide, okay? Um, if I wanna produce, let's say, four moles of iron three oxide, then how much iron am I going to need? Well, we have a, a 2 to 1 ratio here. Um, here, notice it's 4 to 2, but we can reduce that to 2 to 1. So that means if I wanted to produce 4 moles of iron 3 oxide, then I would need 8 moles of iron. Okay, so we can use our stoichiometric ratios here um, for some of these um, uh, simple um, calculations that we can actually do in our head. We don't even need a calculator. So again, mole ratios are, we can use them as conversion factors. So for example, I can write this one either like this or like so. Okay. So, um, you know, you, you have loads of conversion factors that you can make up from your balanced equation. And it's very important that your equation be balanced or else you're always going to get the wrong answer um, with these things. So here I'm asking you how many moles of iron are needed to produce four moles of iron three oxide. Well, again, we just did that. Did that, you know, we realized, well, if we have four moles of iron three oxide, that means we've doubled okay, uh, the number of moles of iron three oxide. So that means we would have to double 
the number of moles of iron that's reacted, and that would be 8. But let's see how to do this on paper, okay? So we're, we start off with 4 moles of iron 3 oxide, and I need to use um, one of these mole ratios here. And just like before, when we do conversion factors, the whole idea is to cancel out, in this case, moles of iron 3 oxide. And so we end up with moles of iron. So I'm going to use this conversion factor here, or that mole ratio. So 4 moles of iron to 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. Okay, so I calculate this and I end up with 8 moles of iron. So in order to produce uh, 4 moles, again we've doubled this, 4 moles of iron 3 oxide, I would need 8 moles of iron. So that was, that was straightforward. We didn't even need to set up a problem or to use a calculator, okay? Um, let's go back, let's go to this problem. Now we're being asked how many moles of molecular oxygen are needed to react with 8 moles of iron. Well, we have to go to our balanced equation and we have to write out the mole ratios, okay? So, um, we're looking at the relationship between oxygen and iron. So, let's see. We know from the equation there are 3 moles of oxygen um, reacts with 4 moles of iron, or I can write it like this. And that's 3 moles of molecular oxygen. So I'm all set to go. So I start off with my 8 moles of iron. And again, I want to go from iron to oxygen. This is the beauty of using a balanced chemical equation and the mole. All right, no need to, um, you know, convert back and forth. We can just, you know, basically, if we're in moles, uh, we just use our mole ratio to get from reactant to another reactant or from reactant to product or product to reactant. So in this case here, I'm going to use this conversion factor or I should say that mole ratio, which is being used as a conversion factor. And what we end up here, uh, we end up with this cancels. So 24 divided by 4, that would be 6 moles of oxygen would be needed. Okay? So that was, uh, that was very straightforward. Again, I can't stress enough that you do need a balanced chemical equation. All right, that is something that you do have to have. And come on, and then that way we can see it. You've got to have the balanced equation when you're working with these. Okay, um, you know, going back to this um, equation, what if I wanted to produce, let's say, half a mole? of iron 3 oxide. So to produce half a mole of iron 3 oxide, then how much um, iron would I need? Um, well, that, you know, you, you really don't need a calculator, but, um, you know, for one mole, I would need two moles of iron, and for a half a mole, I would need one mole of iron. That's because there's a 2 to 1 mole ratio of iron to iron 3 oxide. So this question here, uh, we're being asked how many moles of iron 3 oxide will be produced if 0.256 moles of molecular oxygen is reacted with excess iron. So that's telling me we have plenty of iron, okay? We're only limited by the amount of oxygen we have. So let's go ahead and write out our mole ratio. Uh, we're being asked about iron 3 oxide, and we want to relate that to oxygen. So um, we have 3 moles of oxygen 
sorry about that. Uh, sometimes the um, this uh, button gets in the way. Uh, so three moles of oxygen to two moles of iron three oxide, or I can write it as two moles of iron three oxide to three moles of oxygen. So we have uh, we have our uh, mole ratios here. So I'll start out with what I was given. So that's 2.256 moles of oxygen. And now I need to use my mole ratio to relate the moles of oxygen to the moles of iron 3 oxide. So I'm going to use conversion number 2 here. So I have 2 moles of iron Oops, I forgot my two here. Iron three oxide to three moles of oxygen. Okay? And moles of oxygen cancel. I'm left with moles of iron three oxide. So 0.256 times two divided by three is going to give us 0 0.171 moles of iron 3 oxide. So, um, so if we have 0.256 moles of oxygen and we act it with iron, we're going to end up with 0.171 mole of iron 3 oxide. So that's about a tenth of a mole. Okay, and again, the important thing when you're doing these types of problems, make sure you have a balanced chemical equation and set up those mole ratios.